Greetings and welcome back. For our next project, we're going to be doing a, I want to say simple business card, but we're going to do a personal business card for yourself. This is a real important project, not just for your own marketing, but to get uh, your name out there and to have something that represents you out in the field. So this is actually a two-part video, uh, kind of all rolled into one here. We're going to be going over the graphic design process, something I haven't done yet in my videos, but I waited till this point because this was a focus on Photoshop, so I wanted to get you started with that first. But in all the classes that I teach, no matter it be uh, Adobe InDesign or let's say a web design class even for WordPress, but more importantly the design courses, I like to go through the, the original graphic design process where it talks a little bit about the print world and how we got to where we are. It's only a few pages and I've included the PDF for you to download. But what this does is it goes through, gives you a little bit of history behind why we do things the way we do them and then really a way of thinking when you start doing your design work. This is how I think. I can skip ahead, I can kind of cheat here and there. Uh, I don't like to cheat the process completely but if I'm short on time I understand the process. It's something that I do. It's something how I, this is what I approach all of my projects with. So we're not only going to do that, but our business card as well in Photoshop. And so we'll use the same principles here to actually build out the, uh, the card design. It won't be super fancy because we are, we do have a very limited space um, for our business card. But we'll keep it simple, I'll use some gradients, we'll do some type, we'll get it ready for print, and you'll be turning it in. So it's not a very long pro project in terms of time, but we're going to spend about half the time, that's why I said it's a two-parter here, on the design process. So we're going to start with that, and the project we are doing is the business card, so I'll be referencing that, but I'll pull up some other things online here. I want to show you a little bit of history. But number one, step one in the graphic design process is research. Most of the projects we've done together have been things that I've told you what to do. Um, you sat down with the files that I gave you. You may have followed along with me, and that's all well and good as practice. But in the real world, you're going to have to take those skill sets and apply them to something that the client wants or that you're going to have to build and figure out for that client. So th some of the things we need to talk about here. And probably the most important is time and budget, even though I put those a little bit farther down the road right here. But time and budget, audience, format, and the goal is examined. All these things are examined. Budget and time, though, those are the two big ones, and you can tell I kind of sighed there. Um, everyone thinks what we do is easy. Um, we make it look easy for designers who have been doing this for a long time. It is not easy for it to look right. Um, you know, I could throw something together in five or 10 minutes and it's not gonna look all that great, even with my design background, but it may be functional and that's fine. But if we really wanna solve the design problem, we have to spend some time on it. So budget and time are the first things I usually talk about. So if I had a client came to me and said, I want to do a big catalog. First thing I would say is what's your budget? Uh, because we have to look at printing, we have to look at uh, you know production, getting it out, and then what's your turnaround time on this? And everyone wants it yesterday. Oh, here's a project, here's a flyer we need. Uh, can you have it done right away? Um, I need it by tomorrow. And uh, I have other clients, I have other jobs I'm working on. Uh, if I'm working for a company, there may be other jobs in line before that one. And um, there is this misconception that, first of all, we're miracle workers. Um, which we are, but not always in the speed and the time everyone wants us to do. And second of all, too, is from a budgetary standpoint, if I'm dropping everything that I'm doing, especially for a client, um, they're going to have to pay me for it. Um, I'm going to have to push off other clients. I'm going to probably have to work overtime on it. And um, it does get more expensive. And if you don't learn to say no to those types of jobs, all you'll ever be doing is putting out fires. So when you look at a budget, we need to look at time. And um, for this, I'm actually going to say, from a business card standpoint, budget on this would be pretty low. One of the sites that I wanted to show you is 4over.com. We're going to be using this 
in reference today. They are a printer. They're what they call a trade printer. So you need to have a resale license to work with them. Uh, I do have an account with them as well. And uh, you can order, sorry, you can order pretty much anything from them. If you're working with a smaller printer in your local area, chances are they're probably using them. They have some very good rates. And um, um, one of the lowest rates they have is on business cards. So it can range from anywhere from $16 for a thousand all the way up to like 40 or $50 for a thousand, depending on what papers and what card stock you're working with and all kinds of other things here. I'm going to show you business cards. So you can see there's a lot of different types here. And you notice there's no pricing. I'm not going to get into pricing here very deep, but they have specs. These are the different types of sizes as well as how large you can go in terms of the run. Uh, what type of paper stocks. And I wish I had more time with this for the paper stocks. I can go on and on and on about this, uh, especially with your coatings as well mixed in. But this is where, as a designer, you start to understand what type of stock you have and go from linen, which is made out of cotton, all the way up to 100 pound gloss and everything in between, like even 18 point. That's very, very thick. Uh, my cards are 16. I like them thick on it with a uh, silk laminated. So it has a very unique texture, unique feel to it. So lots and lots of different companies out there to do this with. Uh, the file we're going to be working with is actually a file that for over you could download from their templates once you're uh, signed up with them. And when you're doing design work, always use the printer's templates. Makes life much, much easier down the road. In this case, it's all set up and ready for us to go. In the past, I've been giving you templates. This time, I'm going to be giving you a template from this company. So, key thing here is, I can come in if I had my account on, find out how much it's going to cost me, my cost, on a thousand cards, and then I can mark that up to my client. So, if it costs me $20 to run a thousand cards, um, I'm probably not going to charge for my design time, so I would charge something like $80 for the cards. Because most business cards I can pump out very quickly, especially if they give me all their files. It's really just about setting it up. Now, to get more fancy with the cards themselves in terms of design, and I don't want to call it fancy, more uh, detailed, then that's going to take more time and I'm going to have to charge them for that as well. Um, I had someone ask me the other day, they created a logo for someone, they, the, they paid them for it. Now they were asking for the files to have another designer work on it. Uh, they were no longer going to use my friend anymore. And um, technically she owned the rights to it, but it really came down to money. Is it really worth fighting over you know, a $200 logo that, quite frankly, probably will never become the next Nike anyway? Uh, just keep them happy, move them along, and you know, hope for the best and stay on top of them. Or does she fight it and go in and you know want a new contract and all kinds of things like that? And you know, my what I said was it's just not enough money. Now, if this was a multi, you know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar job or hundred grand or multi million dollar job, that's a much different uh, battle. But this will help you out as a designer. Um, you can order so much from them here, but they have file prep. See, here's actually sorry, they do have. Uh, the files here and this is the one we'll be using here in a minute I've already downloaded it so that works out real nice for you uh, you can come in here and grab templates at fourover.com so we've answered our budget and time so let's say the client has a hundred dollars to spend on that sir amount that's what they have. I know it's going to cost me 20 to print and ship these, so I can maybe make about $80 on this. So I want to keep this project under half an hour. Um, it's really the only way I can make this profitable for myself. You know, it sounds like, ooh, $80 an hour. No, not really. Once everything's taken out with self-employment tax and other things, you know, we're only getting down maybe about 40 uh, if we're lucky. And we want to make this as easy as possible so we're not spending hour upon hours on this as well. So time, budget, I can turn this around probably in a day or two. Printing is another day. So, you know, by the end, if this is a Monday, I can say by the end of the week, we'll have everything ordered. You'll probably have it, if not Friday, on Monday or Tuesday of the week after. We can always rush the order. Uh, but, you know, in this case, don't really see the need unless they really need these cards 
for uh, a convention or they have to go somewhere they just ran out to. So the audience and format, well, we know the format in this case, it is a business card, so um, standard size. And uh, audience, well, that can be anyone. So when we're doing a business card, there's a few things that we want to keep in mind. The goal is to get our information out to people so they contact us back um, and purchase something. It's my front line of offense um, for working with my clients. I get the information in front of them, they take it, they hopefully take a picture of it and scan it or they use it and get back to me. But business cards are super, super important. Uh, we're never gonna get away from that print. As much as we love all the digital stuff, it's still nice just to get a card. When I'm at a convention, I stuff my, my holder where it holds my badge full of the cards. And then that way I know which show all my cards came from. So little things like that, the paper still works really well. I'm not a huge fan of wood or metal. Uh, I, have, I had an incident with a metal business card and went through security at the airport. It was in my wallet and it came up on the, uh, the x-ray machine. They were all freaking out about it. And looking back, yeah, I probably could use it as a weapon. It was that sharp. So when you get weird with things, that's fine, especially if it's an industry. If you're a woodworker, maybe you have wooden business cards. Or if you're a metal worker, you have metal cards. Or if you're a bookbinder, you have vellum cards. And I'm not saying not to be creative, but keep in mind that the simplest cards are the cards that probably will be used the most. So our audience, we know that now. The goal is we get these cards done and when we're going to finish them up. So big thing is make sure you know your audience. For a business card, that's one thing, but if we were doing advertising and uh, to a very specific group of people, you need to learn about that audience and you need to build out and figure out exactly what they need uh, or at least a good guesstimate of what they need and then evolve as well. Don't just sit on one design. Um, if you find that one is selling better, then you try out another and it doesn't, you start building up that data and figuring it out. All of that also goes back to some of the things with the design process in terms of, excuse me, in terms of following the, um, the logo guides, following all of the things that the, let's say the company wants you to do, or maybe a small company and you just know that you don't want to go too far off base. You want to make sure everything fits their overall design look and feel. So talk with your client find out what they want define the visual problem and develop a game plan to attack it so talking with the client is important letting them show you samples if they go we like this this and this that will make your life much 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 easier and um, chances are you end up with three comps comprehensives and um having good open communication with your client is critical to get the job done as well so even just emails or a phone call once a week or finding out if this is a business card and it's very quick turnaround, then okay, I'm gonna text you even uh, to make sure it works. So solid research reduces uh, the design time and serves focus on the essence of the visual problem. Bottom line on this is do your homework. Learn about your client. If they come to you, I may spend five or 10 minutes looking through their website, even on a really short um, turnaround on this just so I get a feel for their look, their colors. You know, most of my clients are smaller ones, but I do have some large scale ones. Uh, always working with their art departments or their marketing department to find out, to make sure that all your colors match and things like that. So if you notice, there's a lot of work in this research side. This step one is a big one here. And uh, it may be a short paragraph, but you really do need to um, spend the time here. Do your homework. This will make everything else faster. So thumbnails, I love thumbnails. It is a little more difficult for you to do them in this class because we're not doing a lot of design work. But if I sat down and I was gonna create a new business card for myself, I would actually get a piece of paper and pencil or pen, uh, maybe go in my sketchbook and continually hammer through as many ideas as I can. I might spend 20 minutes, 15 minutes, just sketching out as many ideas as I possibly can. As you can see here, this is for a logo. We have Navigator Yachts. There's another one for Navigator Yachts. Sorry about the low resolution here. Uh, another one with the boat and then one with the compass. So these are refined thumbnails. 
I like to be really sketchy. You do not need to be artists on this. You can just sketch quickly. You can be stick figures for all I care. Um, but it's about getting the ideas down on paper. That's what thumbnails are all about. It takes all the good and all the bad and gets them out of my head. So they're small in size. They uh, are proportional to the final project. Uh, these are sketches, brainstorming, and doodles. If the final piece is eight and a half by 11, then a good thumbnail size is probably about two by two or one and a half by two. This is where, as I said, the thinking, the experimentation, the growth, every idea you can think of, one or two ideas you like, every variation you can think of happens here. This is where you get to be creative. These are your thumbnails. These are your ideas. The client may never even see these thumbnails. This is your time to work. I cannot emphasize the fact that you have to do this. Even if it's just digital, maybe you have a Wacom tablet and you sit down and work on it. Um, in the end though, we have to make sure that this process doesn't get skipped. Uh, this is the idea process. Sometimes, and, and I'm gonna admit it, I do skip this and just go straight into Photoshop or Illustrator and design and start working, but I still come back to this. I have a piece of paper, I have the pen, I have the pencil to work through it. So, um, as I said, this is very critical and this is where you express your ideas at this stage. And a quality thumbnail should only take a few minutes if not just a minute to do. So these are quick sketches, they're quick thumbnails. And computers make the process easier, as I said earlier too. Do not cut out the thumbnail stage. Even if it's just a book that sits on your desk, a three ring binder or a line paper or something that you can write on and you can sketch out and make notes on as well. So thumbnails, very, very, very important. The roughs, these are the refined thumbnails. This would really be roughs up here. You take your, your thumbnails and rough them out. Um, roughs are used to examine promising thumbnails by testing them out. So I, instead of just having some lines, I'll actually write out the text. Or I am working on an outline for a logo or something. Um, I might do five, I'll say I wouldn't say 500, maybe 50, 60, 75 r really quick thumbnails. I would take my best ones and rough them out. Um, with computers and desktop publishing, your roughs, I may just jump into Photoshop and start working. They are finished products at that point. So this step used to be part very critical, but it is kind of faded away because of the tools that we're using. It's not to say it's a bad idea, we just do it differently now. Uh, we would take our thumbnails, sit down in Photoshop or Illustrator and start working on it. Uh, like a little earlier I said, you know, like a shape around a logo for designing it. Maybe I sit in Illustrator and rough out five or 10 different shapes around the text of the logo, like the boat up here is what I mean by like this outline. Yeah, I'll try different silhouettes, different outlines. I can do that on the computer and get a very finished looking product uh, that the client can look at too and say, yeah, I like that, or I look at it. So this step gets a little mushed into part two here, but I like to break it out just to talk about it. And then comps or comprehensives. This is the last time I called a comprehensive. I like to call them comps, but a comp is a presentation piece to the client. Make sure this is carefully done with all the pieces in place. And these look just like the finished product to, to a point. Uh, they may still have rough artwork and illustrations, but the client needs to feel that it's a near final product. The client makes a yes or no decision based on these comps. In the old days, and I shouldn't say old days, but it has been in many years. Um, let me show you some comps. We'll call them marker comps. Images. So here we go. This is an example of a comp. You can see this was all done by hand. So this is before we had all the computers to paste things up very quickly. We would have to sit down and with markers or cutting out type, you would put together a comp. So you can see here the text isn't real. Um, it really isn't. It's just scribbled. This is comp text. Here's another one. So the first big wheel that your kid can adjust to their size. But you can see it's just scribble, comped out text. It was drawn. We can show this to a client and say, hey, do you like this? Here's a comp for 
looks like an illustrator is doing some comps here, different uh, illustrations. Whoops. But I like this. We don't have a photo. You would have to sketch it out and show what we were going to end up doing. Here's some color comps, working on color to see if they work. There's another one. So the World of Disney Store, this is a very quick comp for it. So you can see here, this is a comped out page as well. So using markers and doing the rendering, here's another real cool thing. That one's actually more like a finished illustration. Here's another one. So you can see some really great ways to visualize before the computer. That's a comp. Now what does that do for you? Not much. Uh, now you're probably going to take and go from your thumbnail straight into Photoshop and start laying out your comps. Um, there are some different types of comps. So if you've ever seen television and film storyboards, I'll put film storyboard here. There we go. So this looks like Spider-Man. Uh, I think this was Spider-Man 2. Here's Harry Potter. So you can see it allows the director to comp out and work out everything visually first. Oops, sorry about that. Then we also have package design. So if I was making a package for crackers, I would just do all my design work, but I would still have to comp this out and fold it out to a three dimensional, you know, print it, glue it. That way the client can look at the finished product. If I was doing wine bottles, I would put the labels on bottles and bring those bottles so the client can see them. We want to make it easy for the client to make a decision. We don't want to make it hard because that's just more work on us. So printed pieces, fold in, present in a final form. If it's a little flyer, fold it up, then we bring that in. Or maybe a magazine. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead there. Maybe it's a, a little booklet, that type of thing. Uh, but printed pieces are folded or presented to final form as close as we can. Catalogs, magazines, etc. It's cover plus key pages. So if I was doing a magazine, we'd have the cover, the index, and a few key pages throughout just to help um, set up the layout. So let's talk about presentations. Uh, step four, this is where the client may be the, might be the first time the client sees the, um, the work that we're doing. So be enthusiastic, sell your idea, be ready to listen, and prepare to compromise. Note requests carefully and go back over them with the client. Always be ready to defend your work. Don't answer every question with I don't know or I don't know why I did that. That's probably the worst one that you could do. Be smart if there's a question asked you can't answer. Tell your client you will find the answer for them. Be honest with the client. They will appreciate it. Um, I'm a little blunt when it comes to this stuff just because I've been around so long. And so if a client wants to go at it with me, I'm more than happy to you know, shoot down whatever design theory they have in their head. And um, if you can have someone else take notes for you, that is awesome. Uh, I've been very lucky in my life to have uh, some assistants who are very good at that. So I never had to worry about it. It just happened. Uh, but that may not be the case. So recording is another way. Not everyone likes to be recorded. Um, but when I worked at McMullen Argus, we I had an assistant and he uh, basically wrote everything down that was said in the room. And that way we can go back and weed through the chatter and find out exactly what was going on. Uh, you know, kind of read between the lines is the best way because everyone has their own agenda. And so having someone do that, especially when there was input from a client saying we want this and that to the logo or to the flyer or whatever it may be, having those notes and going back over them and then actually sending another email with it in writing saying these are the things that we got out of your meeting. Um, you know, this is why we want to do them. And do you approve them? You know, do we need to talk more? So 
being smart and being honest uh, with the client is uh, super important. You know, things do happen. Uh, products get pushed off on both sides. So having that open communication, even if it's just text messaging, can make all the difference in the world. Also, if you can't find an answer or if you can't answer, if you cannot answer a question, tell them you will find out. That happens to me all the time. I don't know what they're talking about, but I'll take good notes and tell them I will find out. You know, they go, we want the new super duper printing whatever on our business cards. That's great, but let's look at the cost and see if we can find something that's cheaper, equivalent, um, or is what we need in the end. So that moves us into artwork and paste up. So camera ready art is what goes to the printer. And if we go and look at some camera ready artwork, let's see what they give us. So, yeah, they're not really giving us much in here. Uh, <laughs> But right here is a good example. See how this is kind of fuzzy? That's not camera ready art. The solid black is. And it really comes down to having clean artwork, having things set up correctly. It used to be paste up. So um, if we put it in graphic design, paste up. Some real old school way of working here, but this was camera ready artwork is sitting down and putting this all together if you notice there's all the different types of tape up here for lines that's how we would draw a black line this was all done by hand there's some linotype machines um, you would type and what would happen is a little metal was inserted in here and then hot lead would be injected so these are little copper or sorry brass uh, letters that get put together on a line they get put in here they're injected and you get the line of text. And uh, I got to see one of these work once uh, a few times. So, uh, But there's some other here. There's a comp. There is, actually, sorry, really a thumbnail, a comp, production art. And you can see all the different tools that were used here. So when I talk about camera ready art, this is really what I'm talking about. Now we just work in the computer. We go straight from comps and really have finished products uh, there are times when I've not made much many changes to a comp and it just becomes finished artwork so all pieces are converted to black and white headline text set pasted precisely in a position all illustrations the boards for each color four color process requires film separations in the CMYK cyan magenta yellow K is black or it's sometimes actually originally started as key I'm going to use it as black though, the K. So CMYK, if we're working digitally, that's black. If it was traditional like this, K is key or black because it is the key uh, that everything is used or uh, lined up with. Um, with computers, we're not pasting onto boards. The concept is the same, but the screen is our board and we're able to produce film from disc and even print directly from the disc to the paper. So this is a process that you know has kind of gone away. And here's lots of type. Here's all kinds of different comps. Um, here's all the tools that we used to use. And I say we because I did learn this first. And uh, then I moved over to the computer as quick as I could. Uh, here's more cut and paste. And you'll notice the black and the blue. The blue is non-photo. So when we go to shoot this onto film, all these blue lines disappear it is the black that gets picked up and becomes camera ready art. As you can see here, there's cold type, all kinds of things that go way, way back. Um, and there is a time, oh, there's Formaline, there it is. Different charting and graphic arts tape. That's how we used to do lines. And uh, we used to have, where I worked had a giant box. Oh, here's the wax machine, sorry. Uh, these used to uh, uh, <laughs> these used to catch on fire all the time, um, but it was hot wax, and that was how we pasted things up was with wax, not with glue. That way you can peel off anything that you've put in here. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on the 
camera ready art and paste up. Now it's just digital. The final thing is the printed piece. This is the goal. It's what your client will use to persuade and sell. And you should collect samples for your portfolio. Now we've gone mostly digital at this point, uh, especially what we've been doing. And um, in a couple future uh, modules, we're going to be doing our portfolio and putting it together. And so right now, though, we're not really printing anything. But this is the final goal is to print or maybe save digitally and send out digitally as well or both or maybe going on the web or maybe going into video or maybe going to VR. So the final printed piece isn't always about printed, but the final del excuse me, delivered piece is the key here. So that's a very quick rundown of the graphic design process. I have taught entire classes, uh, 16 weeks long, just about this stuff here, but it gives you an idea of how to approach a project. First thing we do is research. We get our ideas on paper with thumbnails. We refine those thumbnails into now digital comps. Those digital comps become the final artwork. They are sent to a printer or delivered in another way, and we get our finished final printed pieces. So this file will be there for you to download. Four over is the company, like as I said, we're going to be using their business card. We go to business cards here, and we'll be using their file. And there's lots of different sizes here. The one we are using is three and a half by two. So three and a half inches by two is what we are shooting for here. And you can see it's a very common size through all of these. So this is my file that you've downloaded. This is a very small download compared to previous weeks. And I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. And I'm going to go over to full size screen here just so we get all of the There we go. So drag and drop or do file open to your document that we downloaded, business card template, three and a half by two. So now let's talk about this file. It looks very similar to some of the files that we have worked with in the past. Um, in previous modules, we have our guidelines, we have our red line, which is the cut line. So anything outside this red line here is the bleed. The blue line is the safe line. So anything inside that will not get cut off, even if the trimming's off a little. And our finished size is, size is 3.5 by 2 with a bleed of 3.625 by 2.125. So we have about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So that gives us our nice bleed, our margin, and our what we call safe area. So this file is already set up for us. The background has that artwork on it. So we'll leave it. It's a nice reminder for what we're doing. And um, I'm gonna do a business card for someone named Johnny Storm. So if any of you are Fantastic Four uh, fans, then you know where the name comes from. But that'll allow me to work in some reds. Um, I'm gonna keep the font fairly simple. I'm gonna try to find um, some fire artwork or some create some stuff uh, just as a texture. So instead of just having a solid color, we want to work in some texture to this and a little bit of depth, just like I've done in our other projects. Now, I really want to emphasize this. This should be about your business card, and it can be very simple. It can be white with just text on it. Uh, it's You need to design something that will work for you. It can be a script font. It can be all kinds of things. Um, anything that you want, be creative with it or follow along with me. Uh, the only thing we're going to have to find is possibly some fire, and um, I may have to jump on and show you a few places to find those things. And if we can't generate it from Photoshop uh, or a texture that I like. So I always like working bottom to top. So right now we have this background. I want to drop in a color. So what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool. So before we do anything else, window, workspace, graphic web, I'm going to reset it. That should give you the exact same layout that I have here. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle. If you notice, I started way outside the canvas edges. Ugh. I don't like that blue, do you? Nah. 
it's Johnny Storm. We gotta have some cool stuff going on here. So you know what I'm gonna do is over under my layers, I'm gonna double click on the icon, our, um, sorry, our thumbnail. I'm gonna find a red. There we go. It's kind of a brick red, isn't it? A little bit of orange in there. All right, that looks good to me. So we have our background. So I'm gonna call this red background. And I'm gonna create another layer. I'm gonna call this texture. I wanna have some texture in here. So I'm gonna come up and I am going to grab my brush tool. So a halfway, a little bit before halfway down, we have a pencil. If you click and hold on it, you can go to the brush tool. And up at the top here, we have the size of the brush. So I'm gonna bring this up to about 60. You'll notice there's a lot of brushes in here. You may have different ones than me. I'm gonna open this up just to show you. There are all kinds of brushes you can pull from, but there's not a lot loaded right now. There's a thing called get more brushes and import brushes under the little gear. I'm gonna import brushes and it should take us into our brushes. Ah, I don't have any. Oh, don't have any presets in there. So let me go back in here. Oop, that is not what I wanted to do. You know, it's kind of a cool effect. So let me undo that. So I'm going to open up my brush settings palette. There's lots of different brushes we can choose from here. There's an airbrush. You can see lots of different types. What I'm looking for is a pattern. And I think it's going to be one of my harder edge brushes. I'm going to try the fan brush. So there's some dynamics here. We can get into textures. We can really build this out if we want to. And if you click on brushes, there are some different ones here. So I just want you to pick a brush. Any of them will work. And we gotta make sure the size is a little bit bigger. That's too much, about right in the 70s. And now if I start painting, it's gonna be white, or it's actually gonna be this kind of blue. But I wanna change the color first. So if I come down, and I'm gonna pick kind of a dark blackish color here. So anything dark. And I am going to draw some lines. Yeah, I like this. So hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with it. That works. Mm, that last one I'm going to undo. Because I painted this on a different layer with the red and the texture. So grab anything. I want you to play with this. Yeah, you can follow along exactly with me. But there's all kinds of different things here you can work with. There's oil brush, there's you know oil paint brushes. Uh, there's tons and tons of stuff here. So the brushes are right up here. These are the settings. That's the brush. Now with my texture layer, once again, I have three things here. Background, my red, and that texture. 
And in our previous ones, we went into blending mode. Dissolve, darken, color burn, darker color. We can lighten it up. Ooh, that's interesting. We can screen it. Oh, that color dodge. Yeah, there we go. Color dodge is what I'm going to do. I like that. And I can set the opacity down a little. And I like that. So what I'm trying to show you here is we can try some different things. You know, exclusion, difference, divide. Divide's interesting. I like that color dodge. What do you think? Color dodge or divide? I'm going to go divide. But I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit more. There we go. But this is really about playing. I want you to try different things. So now I'm going to come in here and do a layer style on the texture. And for this one, I'm going to do a pattern overlay. You can kind of see it made a mess. Now we haven't played with the pattern overlay yet, but you can come in and grab all these different patterns. Or you can load other patterns here. So like color paper. I'm going to append, not replace. That will just add them at the end. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I'm going to go with the colored paper. Ah, uh, see that? Texture. So what I did was I did an effects. I did pattern overlay. I went in under my patterns and I loaded my color paper. You can see there's lots of different colored papers in here. But that one I really liked. That one right there. You can see it added a little bit of just torn paper and anything bigger or smaller. You know, so I'm just playing with the scale, but I'm just going to leave it at 100 or very close to it. You can even bring the opacity down just on the overlay. So if you didn't want it to be 100%, but I'm, I'm going to leave it that way. There's also a blend mode for this. You can go in and do dissolves and all kinds of stuff on top of it. It could be, I don't know, exclusion? Nah. I'm going to go back and keep this the way it was. So normal. Now, I'm just curious what a drop shadow will do here. So I applied the drop shadow. The distance is a little high for me. So I'll bring in the distance and the spread. Now, look what happens with the spread. As I go farther out, ah, yeah, I got some depth. I like that. So it makes it look a little three-dimensional here. So that works. I'm happy with it. Uh, my only other thing is the background. I am going to adjust this to be a little darker. Nope. About right in there. And hit OK. Once again, I'm going to say this. I'm going to close my brushes because that's the only brushes I'm going to use. Uh, I only have three layers here. And I have a ton of depth. I can maybe add a little bit of texture to this background now, the red background, and I'm going to do a pattern overlay as well on it. And I think that was a little too much. Well, let's try one of the papers. Eh. A little too much. So,
reason I'm getting this all the way through. I really don't want it coming all the way through. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to leave this alone. I like what I have here. And that looks good. Now I want you to play with this. Like I said, this isn't a very long project, but try some different things. Um, just from a design standpoint here, in my head, I see a few things I can do with this. Now I could just put type on it right across, you know, with my name, I think it was what Johnny Storm we were doing and phone number and email, but I've got some lines here happening and this is kind of what I, uh, Bob Ross would have called a happy accident. And I may have even done this intentionally in my head, um, what I wanted to do. So we have that divide on, not much going on in the dark, and, and this really has to do with the opacity here. If I bring the opacity up, you can see I like that a little bit clearer. What was it, around 45 or 50? But I really want you to experiment. And you notice I'm not using a lot to make this happen. Now, that happy accent I was talking about, we have some lines here. We have some areas I can put phone numbers and text. So I'm going to put the name Johnny Storm right across here. So let's type it out. Well, let's make it formal. John E. Storm. <laughs> now I'm going to fill this with white. And I'm going to take and rotate this. So when you select your move tool, if it is not showing your bounding box, right up here under our options, auto select and show transform controls should be turned on. Oops, did not want to do that. So I'm gonna turn this on its side. And now holding down the shift key, I can grab one edge And these go a little bit smaller. There we go. Double click. Now I'm going a little different than maybe you would. Maybe it's just standard text across. Uh, I'm just trying to do something a little different. So once again, if this is not something you have to follow to the T, but I'm just walking through all of my thought process here on the design side. Um, one thing I didn't show you was I did sketch this out beforehand, uh, just thinking about the brush strokes. Like I said though, happy accident working with this. My font, I do not like. It's not a bad font. Lucia we'll is not, but over here under character, we do have some choices. I have a bunch. You do not have as many as me. Um, let's find something that works here that you'll have as well. Uh, it's too bad I would like the bottom boom, but uh, if you have Baca, this is a script font. I actually like this. It's a little hard to read, don't you think? I'm just playing with this. Um, let's try a different font. That's a little hard to read and you may not have it. Um, let's see if I can pull something off the shelf like Sentry Gothic. We're going to do that. You should have Sentry Gothic both, both on the Mac and PC. If you don't, any font will do here. Pick something though that you like over what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn this just a little bit more. And there's our John E. Storm. So let's change some colors on this. Um, I'm going to select it. I'm going to come up under my options and I am going to grab a yellow. That might be a little too much. A little bit of gray in there. 
let's add some depth. So I'm gonna come down and do a drop shadow on this. Whoa, that's way too much, isn't it? Let's bring the size way down. Bring the opacity down. Let's close the distance. I'm going to zoom in a little here. So that's what it looks like. And I'm going to do something with the color. I'm going to grab my background color. Now, that drop shadow makes it stand out. If I turn that drop shadow off, it looks like it's been tapped out, and I like that better. So using the same background color, still fairly easy to read. One thing we can do is we can add a little bit of a bevel to this on the inside. So I have my layer effects on for this already with this drop shadow, so I am going to do a bevel and emboss on this. So I'm going to turn the drop shadow off. Bevel emboss. So we can have an outer bevel. Let's see. Eh, it didn't do much. I'm going to leave this alone. Oh, there we go. Mistake I made. Did anyone see that? I didn't turn on the effects. So let me come back in here. There's an up. And that looks interesting. So it makes it look like the text is coming out. Ah, there's what I was looking for. So I'm going to do down and make the size about 1. The depth doesn't need that deep, so just maybe 11%. And we can do pillow emboss, emboss, stroke. The boss doesn't do anything. There's outer bevel, inner bevel. I like the uh, just the embossed. So I did a bevel emboss, set it to emboss, the depth, down, size, soften. Let's back up and see how this looks. I'm just using my key command. Well, look at that. Looks like it always belonged there, didn't it? So let's get a phone number, um, maybe his title. So now I want to use the same font and I want to use all these same effects. In previous ones, we've gone in and create our layer effects and duplicate them. Another quick way to do this is just grab your layer, drag it down to the new layers. That creates another Johnny Storm. And now I can rotate it. Whoops. Don't ever do this without the shift key. Right now I'm not holding down the shift, but whenever you scale, not rotate, make sure you do not do this. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Make me mad. <laughs> All right, so... So he is a superhero. Now we don't want it as big, so I'm gonna hold down the shift key and scale this down. There we go. And I am gonna duplicate this again. So you see it's much faster just to duplicate, pick up all of your layer effects. And this one, let's put 555, 555, 5555. Lots of fives. <laughs> let's scale this down a little bit. What do you think? 
that's good. Hey, I can try something here. I am going to select this type. And I am going to change the color to yellow menlo. Don't want it too bright. Just enough so it stands out. So there's the phone number. You can see I'm kind of staggering it. I'm going to put it right here. Actually, ah, Command Z. Let's get it right here. That works. That way it's easy to read. And I went with a little yellow in there just because I wanted it to stand out and just doesn't get lost. And we can put an email address here too. So I'm going to duplicate the superhero again. I don't know if any of you noticed, but I ended up with another layer because I clicked somewhere with the type tool. Be careful about that. I can drag and drop it to my delete or select it, hit delete. You can also right click it and delete. So you have a lot of options there. All right, last thing we want to do is an email. We give them a Fantastic Four email. How's that? Doesn't need to be as large. And I am going to move it over here. Let's see how that looks. What do you think? I just want to leave this open. go my only other thing is um, colors good um, it's a little too bright even though this might be the phone number we want to use all the time I think going darker might actually work better here yeah what do you think There we go. One thing I haven't done, I haven't saved this. So I'm going to save it right now. Um, I'll just call it, for right now, I'm just calling it business card. That way you have a version of it. Now, the only other thing I can think of here is in the background. I want to add something in and I'm gonna create a new layer on top of the background and I'm gonna grab my paintbrush tool again and I have that darker color I'm just gonna And up, so I laid down some more um, brush strokes. And we can render on here as well. You know, one thing I didn't do, and I'm glad I caught it, I'm still in mode CMYK. I'm going to go to RGB on this, and I'm not going to flatten. Do not flatten. And I may save, I'm going to fix the file so you do not run into this. You see me changing it here, so by the time you use it, it will be RGB. We won't have to worry about that. That's why we don't have as many options, is because when you're in RGB mode, uh, sorry, CMYK mode, uh, you don't have as many options as RGB. Now I do here. And so there is a render. There's things like flame and clouds and difference. I'm going to do, whoops, I didn't mean to do fibers, but you can kind of see there what it does. I'm going to do clouds I know it sounds funny but there we go 
Did you see what just happened? When I rendered the clouds, it took what my strokes and made them into clouds. It's a nice quick thing, but you have to have something. It has to have something to render. You can't just have an empty layer. And then I'm going to change my fill on this. Nah, that isn't working the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to move my fill back up. And I'm going to try some differences here real quick. Just to see what happens. There we go. Ooh, that's interesting. Did luminosity. I think it's a little too much, but I'm going to bring the opacity back up. So what I did is on the texture, I had that down in the 50s, so it was showing everything through. I'm going to bring that back up to 100, and with my, hmm, what do we think? This is a decision. So I have the clouds. Or do I go back down to the 60th percentile on the opacity? Or actually around 70. I like this one better. So I'm going to save it. Now, because I've saved it already, I can just do save. And here's my business card for my superhero. Like I said, we didn't spend too much time on it. I'm going to delete out my clouds. But it's simple. It works. Got what I wanted out of it. Probably my only other thing would be maybe to change the color of this type to something a little more. There we go. Kind of burgundy-ish. I can always come in and select to match the color. I can also make a, co a color swatch of it. And let's see how that looks. There we go. Now, if you notice, I'm not at 100%. I'm at uh, the fit screen. I can always do view 100%. That's what it would look like typed, or sorry, not typed, but printed out. So we need to save this as a couple different files. So first one is we're going to export as a JPEG. This is what you'll turn in. So I'm going to select JPEG. 100% is fine for the quality. I'm going to export all. And we want to name it last name, first name, and module. And this would be number five. Oops, not 54. And we'll save it. So that exports it as a JPEG. That is what you'll turn in for your final. Whatever it looks like, however you decided these things don't change. So, next one is I want to walk through how to save this file to go to print. So first thing we're going to do, make sure we saved it as the Photoshop file. Don't want to lose the work we did. So now we're going to save this as a separate file. First thing we're going to do is mode CMYK. This case will flatten it. So this flattens all the layers down into one layer. I can no longer edit the layers. Then we're going to do a file, save as. And this is going to become a TIFF file, tagged image file format. And I'll use the same name. You're not going to turn this file in. So we're saving as a TIFF. It will ask image compression. You can do none, but or LZW is what I do. What it does is it makes the file size smaller, but it still retains the data that we need to um, open up the file. So then we have our pixel order. All of this, we'll leave it alone. We'll hit OK. That saves it as a TIFF. Now you'll notice I'm still in the non-layered version, the flattened. So Let's close it. And we now have our business card. It is up to you what you want to do with the business card. As I said, be creative. Uh, you could put pictures of yourself on it, whatever it may be. 
I tried to do this so you didn't have to go get any different types of files. So if you want to follow along, try out different stuff, uh, use those opacities. Nothing real new here in terms of what we've covered, but there is a lot of things that we just did that we've done in the last few uh, projects too. So little by little, we're getting there. Um, you need your business card though. So hopefully in the end, you'll get a card that you can use. Uh, if not, we'll still provide feedback and get it cleaned up and help you out as much as we can. So if you have any more questions, please email me at any time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next module.